Well, hello, good people. Today, I wanted to share with you a stable diffusion site called Prompt Hunt. And to be honest, I don't know why no one else is talking about this site because it's pretty impressive. Now, I want to give full credit to Polycrumbs and PPublish from my Discord communities for giving me the heads up on this amazing platform. First of all, head over to PromptHunt.com and you'll come across this homepage here. And like many of the image generation sites, you'll see their user gallery here. And then you're going to see a section here for templates, which we'll get into in a second. But as you can see with all the images here, some amazing, amazing work. Now to sign up, you just go up here and I'm already logged in, but should you click on this icon, you can sign up using your Google account, for example. And then once you signed up, we can go ahead and create. This area here is where you're going to enter your prompt. This drop down here shows you the model that you're using. There's also Stable Diffusion 1.5, 2.1, Dolly 2. If you purchase the higher tiers, again, we'll look at pricing later on. And then on the left is your settings. So let's click on this first one here. Here's where you can select your image dimensions, whether you want a portrait style, one-to-one -one ratio, or a wide perspective. Then you have your various output options here. Now you'll notice that these are fixed settings. So at least the membership that I have, it's limited to specific dimensions. You have an area here to create your variations. So if you click that on, you'll notice that this toggles on and it'll create four images. And then here we can upload a reference image. Here is where you would use either a built-in theme or pick styles manually. We'll come back to styles in a second. Let's go down to our usual settings here. We have our guidance, our step counts here, and then here we can choose a model. The PH Chroma 2 is their very own model, which I quite like. It almost has a mid-journey-esque look, but in their own style. If you click on the drop-down, there are more models to choose from. We've got quite a few here nitro diffusion redshift arcane diffusion a lot of the popular ones that are available are here which is definitely a bonus and then we have our samplers you know the typical oilers we've got dpm2 dpm plus plus there's quite a few to select from now let's look into their themes and styles. So in a nutshell, their themes are like a whole bunch of styles put together to make prompting easier. For example, if I wanted to create, let's say some app icons or some logos, you see that when I click onto it, it has all these styles attached to it. So if I were to put in a prompt here for a logo I was going to create, for example, you see on the right, it's applied the theme. All these styles will be assigned to the prompt as well. So let's go ahead and click create. And as you see here, we have our app icon logos. And I quite like how they turned out. They look really, really good. So let's take off this theme and we're going to do something else with styles. So let's click on styles. Then I'm going to enter my prompt here. Now, mind you, you could even start even more simpler. You can just cut it off from this point. But my goal here is just to get the main idea across with the prompt and then use the styles for the rest of the prompt to build it. So the first thing I want to do, since this is a photo, there's a restore faces option here. Simply got to click on the icon so it shows the eye there. And then up here, you're going to see this section for excluded. These are negative prompts. It's already active, but you can add on to this as well. And all we have to do is click on the plus button here. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of categories here where we can add to the prompt. You can also search for it. So let's say I wanted an anime style. It's going to bring up all the anime related prompts. So since I want a photo, obviously I want it to look photo realistic. So we can search for photo. We can click on photo realistic portrait, for example. We can click on photo realism photography lighting. There's various sections here we can select from. Reference will be specific styles here. As you see, we have 3D Pixar art, 80s anime, action figure. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And there's even also embeddings. So let's choose analog style, for example. There's a section here for color if we want a specific look. Black and white, airbrushed gradient. You get the point. So 
Let's finish off this prompt. Let's go to background. We're going to choose colorful gradient background under perspective. Let's choose, I don't know, head and chest only. And then once you're done with your styles, you could click on save as theme, give it a name and reuse this prompt as much as you want. And it makes it super, super easy for new users. So let's go ahead and click create. And there you go. We have our results based on the prompt that I use and it's got most of everything that I put in there. It's got that gradient background, beautiful colors, looks very photorealistic. Yeah, very cool. Now to remove these styles, you just go back up here. There's a minus button here. You just click on that and then the styles are gone. So I encourage you to check out these themes. They're all really, really cool. This theme here was made by the person I mentioned earlier, Polychromes. And this is for photo realistic photos. So if we look at these examples here, we've got some older celebrity generations here. It looks really cool. And if you look at the styles used, you see it listed here. Now, if we want to try this theme here and then I can enter the same prompt, you see that now this specific theme is incorporated into my prompt. We're going to generate some images here and here are the images generated. The head's a little cut off here, but as you see with this one, this one turned out really nice. Looks a bit CG, but part of it too could be my prompt. It might have to help it a little bit. This one looks a bit more photorealistic, really cool results. In general, I'm really happy with the quality that you can get. Their PH Chroma 2 model works very well. Well, another cool thing they have here is this shuffle button. And basically this is chat GPT. If you click on it, it'll create some random prompts for you. Should you want to just kind of surprise yourself. And in this case, it's a young ballerina, which we see here. Really cool. Now I'm going to go deeper into the styles and themes in another video because I feel like it deserves its own dedicated video. But now I want to show you one of the features that is super valuable and that's control net. If we head over to the left menu, click on the first icon here, we're going to do a wide shot standard 768 by 512 create four variations and then we're going to upload an image here i've got this image here somebody meditating this is going to be our reference image you have your image strength here but this is what i wanted to show you there's a lot of rage about control net right now. And unfortunately for most web UI platforms, it's not really available. So this is definitely a bonus for sure. I'm going to show you three examples. We're going to start with canny here, and I'm simply just going to type in samurai meditating. I'm going to leave this theme here just so we have something. And then we're going to click on generate. And here we have the results. Now with Canny, you'll notice that the image is very similar to the reference image. And that's because with Canny, it focuses more on the outline and the details of the subject. So although the subject has changed, and yes, don't judge the faces. This is more about the posing, but you'll notice the outfits change, little details of the room change. Like if we look at the floors here, they do change between the images. So again, with Canny, it focuses more on the outline and detail of the image. If we go back down here and we select depth. With depth, it deals with the foreground and background. So unlike the previous option that I just showed you, although the room is still the same, the details are a little more different. Like for example, if you look at the background, the room looks very different from what we did previously. Now the subject here is facing the other way, but you get my point. So still a very similar image, but now we're dealing with foreground and background in general. Now, if you want to completely change the environment, even the character, you want to use open pose. Let's go ahead and generate some images using open pose. Now we see a very drastic change in the image. Obviously the pose is still very similar to the reference image, but now we have a background that is more in relation to the subject. So we have our meditating samurai here with more of a nature background. This one, he's in the woods meditating here in the temple. This one I quite like actually, really cool. Tiny hands, but, <laughs> and again, the faces could use some work. 
not the best reference image, but you get my point. And then the last one here, which looks like he's probably in the mountains somewhere, but you see how open pose gives it more of a creative look and deviates away from the reference image while still keeping the pose of the reference image. Now here are some other examples where I was using a boxer as a reference image and I put in a samurai punching as my prompt. And if you look at these details here, the misty sweat or whatever it is coming off the samurai here and uh, even the facial expressions looks really cool. And this one's a little janky. I don't think I've ever seen a samurai boxer before, but that's the beauty of control net. You can basically put your subject in any pose. Here's another one I did with the same meditating pose. And here's another example where I used control nets open pose with this reference image to create this anime style image. Now as great as this is, how much does it all cost? If we look at the pricing plans here, you can try it for free. Unfortunately, it's only 20 images a day. If you're anything like me, you're going to use that up in just a few minutes, but at least you could run a few images just to see if you like it or not. This one's the most popular and this is the one that I'm using just to try it out for now. You get 14 days free for $1.99 a month. So basically $2 a month, which generates 500 images a day. And you'll get all these options here that are listed. The other plan I would say is still very competitive, just about $10 a month, 2000 images per day. And you also get access to Dolly 2 with 800 images per month. As always, I'm gonna have a follow-up video on Prompt Hunt and dive deeper into the themes and styles. But so far, I would say in terms of the quality of the output of the images, they rival all the other stable diffusion sites like Leonardo AI, Blue Willow, Playground. Pricing is very competitive and I absolutely love the concept of styles and themes. So I'd love to know what you think about Prompt Hunt. Do you see yourself using this service? Of course, it needs things like outpainting, maybe training models in the future would be cool. Make sure to join their socials, YouTube, Discord to stay up to date. I'll leave all those details in the description below. And speaking of outpainting, if you haven't heard or seen already, Playground AI has just released their outpainting. Although it is in beta, make sure to check it out here. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.